Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at yet another insane update coming from the CMU team. We're going to be taking a look at their latest emulator release version 117.2. Now, before we get started at taking a look at any of these changes, I want to make you guys aware of the fact that my reshed video has actually gone live a few days ago. So for anybody who's looking for an easy to use guide for reshade, especially with CMU's new Vulkan backend, you can find my guide on my channel right now or linked down in this video's description. On top of this, we also updated the reshade version. So if you followed this guide already, please make sure to update the files I provided you with to the new versions since these new files give a drastic improvement to stability and performance, also adding compatibility for AMD GPU users and also any users who are using laptops with Optimus technology. Now that that little update's out of the way, let's jump straight into it and take a look at all the changes coming in 117.2. First things first, with this update releasing for CMU's Patreon supporters last Friday the 14th of February, this of course meaning that it's releasing to everyone in the public for free on the coming Friday, February the 21st. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just blast quickly through the changelog for 117.2, then we're going to take a look at some of the more major changes, and believe me, there are a ton of major changes in this new version. Starting things off with some general improvements, they have fixed an issue where the games list would display updates or DLCs instead of your base game. This is of course if your base game was not found. They've removed redundant global options for CPU and vertex cache in the menu bar. They've removed pre-compiled shader options from the game profiles since to be honest there wasn't any reason at all to configure them on a game by game basis and they have added a new debug option in the general settings menu to enable the creation of crash dumps for any of your specific games. Moving on to some changes they've made to the Vulkan API, they fixed a rare crash that could occur for any game due to a hash collection in the pipeline cache at runtime, they fixed custom shaders not being applied for version 5 graphics packs, and we have also seen several minor tweaks to increase performance and stability. Now you would think that these kind of changes to Vulkan would be the main feature of these new updates, but boy would you be wrong. In this new version, they have made huge overarching changes to the emulator's core. Let's take a look at them now. First of all, they have overhauled the MP Task Queue API. The previous implementation required game specific workarounds for the likes of Tokyo Mirage Session, which is no longer necessary. Next up, the default Power PPC thread for Core 1 is now also the thread that begins execution. Some games are reliant on this method. Just one game of note is Paper Mario Color Splash, with this change fixing crashes in that title. Saving the best for last, they have fixed several race conditions that could cause deadlocks and softlocks in many games when using CMU's multi-core recompilers. What this means for you is that you are now going to be able to use dual and triple core recompilers with many, many more games on the emulator, giving you huge performance jumps in any of these now supported titles. Mario Kart 8 is a fantastic example of just such an improvement. You can see here when I unlock my frame rate using a custom graphics pack, the difference in performance from single to triple core is astounding. On single, we have in and around 160 to 180 frames per second, while with triple core, we range from 280 to 330. That's almost double the performance level. Again, when doing the same test with Splatoon, you can see on single core, we're getting in and around 200 frames per second, while when using a triple core, we're getting well over 300, yet another huge performance boost. Another game that lots of people struggle to run on CMU is Super Smash Bros, taking the 8 player smash mode, the most demanding by far mode in the game. You can see here that on a single core recompiler I get around 100 frames per second, while on a triple core recompiler I'm getting 190 to 200 frames per second at times, again almost doubling my frame rate using one single settings change. Now it's not just those titles that have seen big performance uplifts, we also need to remember that there are many games on CMU that actually have 60 frames per second patches or 60 FPS. 
FPS mods. One fantastic example of a game like this is Hyrule Warriors. Thanks to this update, not only does it no longer deadlock or crash when using multi-core recompilers, meaning that due to this and the performance improvement from it, Hyrule Warriors should now be playable at 60 frames per second for many, many more people. Tokyo Mirage Sessions is yet another game with a great 60 frames per second patch, and thanks to its now improved compatibility with multi-core, should be far more playable at this frame rate for many more users. While there's a lot of compatibility testing that's going to be required in the coming days and weeks to determine what games do and do not work with these multi-core recompilers now, just a few of them include Twilight Princess, New Super Mario Bros. U, Yoshi's Woolly World, Tekken Tag 2, Splatoon, Mario Kart 8, Wind Waker HD, Devil's Third, Minecraft Story Mode, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Hyrule Warriors, and Tokyo Mirage Sessions. While this list has vastly improved since 117.2's release, I'm sure it's going to grow a lot more when all of this stuff gets released to the public, so I'm super excited to see what game are further improved once this comes out for everyone on the coming Friday. As always, if there are any games you'd like to see tested on 117.2, leave those game requests down in the comment section, but for now at least, that's going to be it for this video. Once again, if you enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like button down below. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, please hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, please consider hitting the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as I upload any new videos. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, have a great day, and I will see you all in the next one.